Okay, froze. So, okay, this is just going to be easier than trying to explain uh, over text. So, okay, so I've had a lot of thoughts about my, um, about my, uh, what do you call it? My, my book video, the audio book video, because um, this is really important to me, obviously. Um, I want it to be like, like kind of one of those, like you're sitting in your room with your best friend and they're like sharing like fiction with you sort of vibe with it, rather than it being like, here is this super polished audiobook, even though I know that super polished audiobook would like probably age better in the long run. But I don't know. I, I'm wondering if there's a way to get the best of both worlds. I think the difficulty, I think one of the reasons I really want to lean in to the like being more personal and like authentic sort of approach to this rather than trying to make it all polished and such at least in that particular card is one to keep my production costs costs like the energy that has to go into it down because it's like i mean this isn't my job so i i don't have a lot of spare energy and time and stuff i want to make this to as emotional as possible without making it as like while well, lowering the barrier to entry for myself, you know, that's always what they say is to like lower the friction, that's the word they use, the friction to start doing things you want. Um, especially since I feel like my community on YouTube, as much as I'd like it to be like, I don't know, like I'd really like to be friends with a lot of these people, they seem cool, but it's like kind of disconnected because so many people are here from my game dev days. Um, when I was doing game dev college stuff, the videos were all terrible because they were all like vlogs about how I was doing game dev, except for they weren't really about the game dev, so it was just bad. It was just bad. Um, and then you had the people coming in just for conlangs, and I worry about them the most because I had a lot of those. My how to conlang video did extremely well, and it's like, hi, I'm really bad at conlanging. Here's how I uh conlang and then you know um i'm like i feel like i'm a fake conlanger you know um it's not like i i take pride in it and to like the average person on the street i what i'm doing is very impressive but to anyone who knows what's going on they're like excuse me like what <laughs> what is this <laughs> where's your phonology you know what i mean um so i worry that because of that my community's expectations for what my web fiction and stuff is is gonna what that's gonna be is like really split and so by making it more personal i'm hoping that can be something that can bring them more together but i also suspect that like a really large number of people aren't gonna even watch it because it's gonna be like an audiobook thing um but i want it but like it's also the central reason why i made this youtube channel right is to like try to get people get more people to read my stuff because while i don't think it, it's sort of the thing where i don't want to present it at like as like publishing quality, right? Because it isn't, obviously. It's never been with another with an outside editor. It it's only been edited by me once. This is legitimately probably a second draft on most of this stuff. And um, you know, so much of it, it needs work. There's a lot of rambling and stuff in it. But I also want to present it to people because I don't I'm very much of the opinion that one, in order to get better, you need feedback from a community that cares about you in good faith not like people just being like oh i hate the way your model looks because of the fucking burn scars like okay bitch get out of here you're not i don't want you here if that's how you feel you know what i mean like i want people to see the imperfections and be like okay like this isn't perfect and that's fine like this is i don't expect purity out of my media and that's something that i think is like a really big deal especially as i've been seeing like the actions to people on book talk and stuff with with like the plagiarism allegations and um the like sensitivity reading stuff and like i want to share my work but i don't want my work to have to be perfect and like obviously i do my best i try to i consider myself to be like a kind empathetic person i do my best to like genuinely be like what if you are hurting, what can I do to help, right? Like, how do I not cause more? How do I not add on to your load? But, um, you know, I'm not a perfect person, and this is not a full finished, like, published book. This is a, you know, it's 
a email thing that I want to share with more people specifically so I can get feedback on it and improve my future writing. Like I'm not interested as much in polishing my past work as I'm interested in on improving my skill and getting better in the present. Um, and I think that's also really difficult just because like I have like a small handful of writing friends and most of them are hobbyists. Like they are not if I go at them with the, oh, what verb do you think is best in this sentence, like, majority of them do not give a shit because they're like, whatever, bro. Like, it's fine. Mm, and, or I'm, mm, or I'm, like, really digging into, like, making my verb stronger. And that's just not something that is, like, that's just not what they're focused on. Whereas for me, like, that's a place where I know I'm really weak. Um, and it's, it's like, I can't progress as much as I could when I was in school. So it's, it's like, you know, like, how, how do you find those sorts of mentors and teachers? And I still have those connections, but I feel bad because now they're not getting paid. Or, I mean, I guess I could pay them, but I, I still feel bad about it, you know? Um, so there's that. Oh, my, uh, my nighttime yellow filter turned on. I hope that doesn't come over in the recording, but whatever. Anyway, um, so like... I don't know. I think the other thing that I know that I could do to improve my writing is read more books. So maybe that's the thing I should do before I try. I should read more books and like edit stuff more. But like, and here's the other thing also about this video, right? That's been stressing me out. Like, do I just go into it and I'm like, to all the dearest, lend me your ear for I have a tale, blah, 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 blah. And then I just open it with the burned maiden, even in the light of the serpent, the snowy ruins of old Thule meant nothing without him. And, like, I just open it like that and I just go? Or do I give them this preface, like, oh, you know, like, this is what world letters are, this is not a finished work, if there's, like, here's, like, some content warnings, or maybe I should just do, because I think that would reduce the bingeability of it, right? Like, you, if you're here to just, like, listen to good stories, you just want to listen to the stories, you don't want to hear the author, like, interrupting you every chapter, being like, these are my thoughts. Um, but at the same time, I think that those are important because it's not finished, right? It's not, and also because of the way that it's been presented in the past, I think the thing that softens it for you guys, the reason that you all who like read my emails are like, oh, you know, Belle, it's okay that like there was some bad stuff here because I can just talk to you about it and then I know that you're going to fix it or whatever. So I don't know how to make that clear to my audience that like it isn't a first draft, but it's not like no thought has been put into it either. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that's, that's stressing me. I don't want to get, like, accused of making, like, torture porn or something, or sh struggle porn. That's the word, not torture porn. <laughs> struggle porn. Because, like, when I was writing it, it was, like, my lived experience of going through my breakup. So I don't know how to get, how to create the vibe that will prepare an audience for the kind of work that I'm preparing, send, giving them, because it's not a very, it's not traditional, and it's not indie mimicking traditional either it's like super indie really scrappy but like you should still take it kind of seriously because it's not like i didn't put any thought into this um anyway i don't know mm, i just want people to like me you know it's tough the internet's mean um yeah i don't know I want to get this off my chest because I've been really feeling the pressure to be working and creating stuff all the time again lately, and I know it's really bad for me. I really have been trying to separate my self worth and my, my you know productivity, but capitalism, blah blah blah. Um, but it's the whole it's the whole Maury Calliope thing where she says, um, "Is it like what is the line? It's like is it overworking or is it escaping? Is it?" It's, it's something about modern minds, keeping up with modern minds. Wow, fake fan. I can't even quote it. But anyways, it's, oh no, it's a really good line about how she, like, feels like she has to be constantly overworking. And it's not because she's, like, a tryhard. It's because she's trying to compete with the fact that the modern mind moves on from things and the tension moves on so quickly. Um, and that's, I don't know, that's something that's really resonating with me. Um, but I, the VTubing has made things easier, just all, overall. It, m making stuff, when I'm not trying to, like perform my face into a camera like I just have Arliss there going makes it so much easier because I don't have to like look presentable I can have just like showered and be in like my PJs or whatever I don't have to you know perform beauty for people because Arliss there isn't performing beauty for people either you know um and I'm I don't know I'm really pleased with that and I'm really pleased with the way the channel has been growing and I think the content I'm putting on it is 
meaningful to me and it does it is important and that's the important most important part to me but i also want people to watch it and not immediately go oh like this is just like some girl in a room and i guess it is because i am like some girl in my room but i am also like trying to genuinely create good experiences for other people too it's the it's the thing where i want the art to be genuine but i don't yeah anyway i don't know um like i i just want people to know that i mean what i say but i want them to feel like it's real too i don't know how to do that i don't still um because i feel it when i'm saying it but how do i make you know that i'm not lying because this camera and between us maybe make the, and the anonymity of the internet i think is just creates a system where we expect people to be fake so anyway all this to say is i want advice on how to um <laughs> this is gonna be way shorter whatever mm, i want advice on how to frame my book reading in a way that people aren't gonna like jump on me and accuse me of plagiarizing and hate me and whatever um because it isn't professional it isn't professionally done it's just with the mindset of taking it seriously. It's the, I'm not selling my art, but I am trying to get better at art. So, yeah, I don't know. Tell me what you think uh, now that you've listened to this very long talk. Okay, bye-bye.